What up, YouTubers? We are going to breadboard a muff fuzz today by following a schematic I found from Beavis Audio. I screwed up my first time, so hopefully this works. Hit the intro. Hit it. Hit it. The demon is your mind. Satan swine. All right, we're going to start off by breadboarding the muff fuzz. So here's a simple schematic from Beavis Audio which is pretty cool because it also comes with breadboard instructions because when I did it the first time I screwed it up so I had to follow this instruction to make sure I did it correct so we're gonna start off with a schematic and a blank breadboard and work our way through it and we'll use this cheat sheet right here if we need it okay here we are at the beginning of our schematic as you can see the input is our blue wire and our first component we're throwing in is the 100 NF. And we are going to put the left lead on the same row as the input. Okay, here's our next section of the schematic. As you can see, our transistor has those three, the base, collector, and the emitter. And in the middle of that base, the 100K is shooting down the ground, the first one to the left, the one in the middle, the 100K, that is connected to the 100k to base and the 2.7 which connects over to the emitter of the second transistor now you see how we're saving space by using the leads instead of jumpers but also you can tell there's one mistake i made the 2.7k is supposed to shoot down to ground and it is clearly in the positive and it's that easy to make a mistake so make sure you check your work. So I fixed this one and hopefully it's ready in the next photo. Okay, so now it's gonna to start to look a little confusing but we have to add jumpers for our connections. Our first connection is that blue wire to the right of the 100 NF capacitor and it is shooting over to the base of the first transistor. I know it's hard to see but that's our first connection. Our second connection is going to be the emitter from the first transistor going down to ground. All right, and our last jumper in this section is the green jumper, which is going from the collector, the C of the first transistor, connecting to a 100K, then going in to the base of the second transistor. And this is our last connection of this section. Okay, so now we're moving on to the final section of the schematic. We have now inserted our 100F capacitor right into the collector of the second transistor. We've also connected our two diodes to the right lead of the 100 NF. All right, one of these diodes, the negative lead is shooting right into the 100 NF, the black stripe, and the other is shooting straight to ground. Now, we're going to hook up our potentiometer. Okay, now we have our potentiometer hooked up. The first wire is shooting straight to ground. The second wire is our output, and our third wire will be going right into the input where the 100 NF and the diodes are connected. And this will be our final connections for our schematic. By simply just using those leads for grounds and positives, which you can see right there, I saved damn near 20 jumpers. Look how many jumpers I spared and how less confusing it looks as you can actually see what's going on compared to the jumbled mess, which I'll show in this next clip, of how many jumpers I actually had on that breadboard. So it is a big difference when you use those leads in positive and negative. Man, surprising. Okay, we uh, breadboarded our little schematic, and now we're going to find out if it works. I'm going to hook it up to my Vox AC30, and hopefully we get some noise. All right, we've tested everything out, and 
It works, folks. Feels pretty good. Hold on. Let's take a listen. Thanks for watching The Pedal Network, Episode 1. We did it. We figured it out. And if you liked this video or didn't, like and subscribe. You can make fun of me if you did. Right, buddy? What do you think? Say yes. Yes. All right. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching The Pedal Network. Say bye. Bye. The demon is your mind. Satan swine.